Hey everybody, this is Kevin. I'm starting the second installment of Dart in the Shell. Last time, if you remember, where we ended up is we had a What's Up app command that was working great in Dart and could be run independently. So let's go look at that. We put it in the temp directory under demo, and there's our script. Just so you know, I have u aliased to ls, so as you see me running around the shell, u is just my shortcut for people that use the Dvorak keyboard. And if we run what's up, we'll see we get this what's up world that existed before. And really easily, let me show you the contents of that, just so we remember. We did the work so that we had the um, invocation, the shell invocation statement at the top saying, please, the, the current environment, run this script via Dart. And we had our executable bit set on it. So if we look at the bits on what's up, you see that we have executable added. Now, one thing we also talked about was adding scripts to your path environment. So if you see, if I type, try to type what's up in the parent directory or even run it, I get errors about not knowing where what's up is. And the problem is the path that contains what's up, that temp slash demo, is not in our environment bar and not in the path environment variable. So let's add what's up to our path environment variable. And we can do that directly by doing export path equals the current path variable. An important thing to note here, and that's why you just saw the video jump, is you don't want to include trailing spaces. So even though the shell wants to complete with that trailing slash, I'm sorry, in the path environment variable, you want to exclude that. So let's exclude that. If we look at export, or for you, even easier, echo the path environment variable, you'll notice that now we have um, temp demo in that. And if I do which, what's up, which reports where it is accurately, and if I do what's up just directly, it runs great. Now this is a problem if you want to always have what's up of this directory in your paths. And so what you need to do is actually edit your shell environment variables. And if you don't do that, let me just close this window and I'll open up a new one and I type what's up, you notice it isn't there. So this is something that varies a little bit machine to machine. And I would actually recommend you just Google around and see how your current setup is because for a lot of people this is different. For most people there should be a file in your root directory um, your user directory, so right now I'm in users Kevin, that is run every time you open a new command shell. For me, it's profile. So if I do an ls, you'll see profile. And of course, it starts with a dot, so it's hidden. So if you do a normal list, or even if you look at your user directory via Finder on a Mac, you won't see it because it's hidden. But if you do um, ls-a um, to see all files, you'll see all files, or if you, do dot, if you um, prefix it, you'll see it's there. So if you look at my profile file, you see a bunch of exports. I'm grabbing a bunch of completion scripts from Homebrew. We'll talk about that in a second. I'm doing some funky stuff so I get interesting features with Git and a bunch of other things. What we want to do right now, though, is add this temp directory into my profile file so that every time I load the shell, that executable is available. So I'll open up my favorite text editor right now until brackets gets a little bit better and we'll edit my profile file. We'll move it over to this window, and at the very bottom, after all the fun things I have for RVM and other stuff, I'll do that same thing. So I'll do, oops, export, path equals path demo. Now, if I try to run what's up now, it won't work. I could re, it's called sourcing the profile file, but I don't want to duplicate things. So I'll just kill out that terminal, or actually just open a new tab. And now if I do echo path, I should see that it's there. And now if I do which what's up, you'll see that it exists. And if I just execute what's up, it exists. And so again, you might see a dot bash RC or a dot bash profile file in that directory. Um, I've searched and tried to find a consistent way to think about these things, and it ends up being a little confusing. The reason I've stuck with .profile is that it's worked forever, and I've um, got used to it. But depending on your environment or how things set up, it might be different for you. So that might be worth a little sleuthing when you're done watching this video. But right now we have our executable in that directory working great everywhere because that path environment variable has been set, and it's set in a way that every time I open a new tab or a new terminal, it works. Now, 
What would be interesting is this is actually to start parsing the input we're getting from the shell. So it'd be nice if I could say what's up and type in Shauna and parse those environment variables. But right now we're not getting that data from our app. So how do you do that? Well, there's actually a set of classes in the core libraries of Dart that let you parse those things. So let's go play with that. The first thing I'll do is I'll bring up the Dart editor. And let me bring it over to the right window here, just one second. And let's open up the directory where that app is. So that again, that was in our temp directory, under demo. Now again, if you look at the last video, I talked about how you can rename a file so that it shows up nicely and you get color coding and completion and analyzer working. Um, and I renamed what's up to remove that extension just so it felt like a normal command. But since I'm gonna be playing around in the Dart editor, just for now until we kind of finish this section of the video, I'm gonna rename it back to the Dart extension so that the editor should wake up after I close the tab and reopen it. And we see nice completion here, which is really nice. And again, because that whole path is in our, um, the path, the demo path is in our environment variable, if I go back to terminal and type what's up, you'll see that it completes to the Dart file and still works great. It turns out the extension is just kind of a helper thing and doesn't really do much. So now that we have what's up dot Dart, what we want to do is have a way to find what arguments are being passed into the environment. And the way we do that is with the options class. So if I create a new options instance, I can now see what options are passed in. So let's do a really simple thing and do options.arguments. So there's a instance variable of list of string on options. And so if I go back and run what's up, you'll see there's an empty array. So if I come in here and do what's up Shauna, you'll see that I get one argument. If I do um, you see I get an array of options. So that's really nice. So let's imagine a world where we want to say what's up to everyone that's saying hello to us or every every option that's passed in. What we come in here and say is let's start with hmm how about this? Let's do names equals. We're going to do two lists here to copy arguments. Because I'm not exactly sure how arguments is implemented, if it's read only, what, it, what it's doing, it's always safe to just copy it. So calling two lists on any iterable will return you a new list of items. And then I feel okay modifying it. So now we have a names. I can say if names is empty. We'll add world to it. And then I can do for. You'll notice I use finally a lot, and this is basically just my way of babysitting me. I tend to program very defensively, or at least I try to. And so this makes sure that if I define a variable as final, I won't go back and change it because I'm not intending on changing any of these things. And let's add in the shortcut for referencing that variable. And so if I do what's up again and just run it, you'll see world works great. If I do my wife's name, Shauna, it'll say Shauna. And then if I do my dad and my mother and my brother, you'll see I get printout of all those eyes, those uh, those names. So that works really nicely. So options is a super simple way to parse the arguments passed into the shell. Something else that's interesting to, and good to know about options is it's smart about quotations as well. So if I did someone that had, um, I have no idea. Let's do John Anthony as the first example. You'll notice that it's smart and it actually parses out this name as one value. So I don't get John and Anthony if you quote things. So that's a nice feature of options.